Friends, I'm Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, pastor of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, the church where Jesus Christ is always magnified and never ever is he compromised. Welcome to another TOD broadcast. We're located at 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue in the city of Memphis. We worship the Lord each Sunday morning at 7.45 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. Two dynamic services. You will be tremendously blessed at either or both of these services. Sunday nights we meet at 7 o'clock p.m. and then Tuesday night is a very very special night at Temple of Deliverance. It's our miracle anointing service, pastoral teaching, and night of deliverance. This is when we take time to teach God's Word, go verse by verse, scripture by scripture, and the Word just unfolds to us. And it's a wonderful time in the Lord on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. I look forward to seeing you in attendance. Well, I tell you, we have been coming through some hot weather. It's been all over the country, and you know right here in our area, it has been high 90s, 100 degrees every day. But God is still good, and He's still blessing us. Let's look again to the book of Exodus today, uh, chapter 23 and verses 20 through 30. I won't go through all of them now, but you know the background, how God has brought Israel out of bondage and he's leading them through the wilderness, leading them in the way. And what really struck me was verse 20, when the Lord said, I'll send my angel to go before you and he will keep you, he'll protect you, he'll watch over you, he'll guide you and he'll bring you to the place that I have prepared. But then as we skip to verses 29 and 30, he talks about all those enemies that Israel had to encounter, Canaanites, Hivites, and all the other Ite brothers. He says, I won't drive them out before you all at once, not in one year. But verse 30, he said, little by little, will I drive them out? In other words, God says, I'm going to drive out your enemy a little at a time. I know you want God to do it right now immediately and just wipe them off the map. But God says, I'm going to drive your enemy out a little at a time. But as you look back over your life, you'll see that God has conquered this giant. He has slayed this problem. He has eliminated this debt. He does it little by little. Let's go into today's telecast. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. Now, now this is God talking. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. 
There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, the Hittite from before thee. Uh, listen to verse 29 and 30. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased or until thou be advanced and inherit the land. I will not drive them out before thee in a year, but by little and little, I'll drive them out. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, your deliverance comes a little at a time. Your deliverance comes a little at a time. Now that may not sit well with everybody because many people want their deliverance right now. I mean right this moment right this instant and it's not to say that God cannot do it because God has a multiplicity of ways that he can deliver you but deliverance is and has always been a process and life is all about processes a baby doesn't become an adult overnight it's a process you don't obtain a uh, college degree overnight it's a process your marriage does not become what it should be overnight it's a process and then I have talked to some people who've been married 50 years they say Reb I'm still praying It's a process. But one of the common traits that seem to be indicative in today's society is that many people want instant success and instant gratification. God could very well execute that type of plan if he chose to do so. But God knows better than anyone that success, elevation, deliverance is much more appreciated when you obtain it over time. Now time can work in your favor if you know how to use it. Time can be both an asset and it can be a liability Lord I don't know why I'm saying I'm saying this stuff maybe because my wife got this marriage stuff on my mind when I met my wife at the musical years ago at Bishop Wright's church it took a process for me to get her phone number I'm at the bottom of the steps and I'm looking up and I just stared at all in service. I mean, I, I could have made her nervous. What kind of man is this? And when I finally eased up to her and talked a little bit and asked for those seven digits, When I finally asked for those seven digits, 
She said, well, you can get my number from one of my friends. <laughs> I mean, she just slammed me <laughs> and just cut me off. But I kept after because I knew what I wanted. And in the process of time, I received the prize. <laughs> time can be your asset, but you have to use it wisely. It also can be a liability if you waste it away. And many folks feel that they have all the time in the world, that they have their whole life in front of them, but they're not realizing that time is winding up. The story of ancient Israel is one that never grows old. God displays a tremendous love for people that he cared about in a special way. You can say what you want to say, but God loves his creation. And he loves us in spite of us. Because there are a whole lot of things that God is not happy with us. And there are some things that you're not happy with yourself. But God loves us in spite of us. The psalmist said, he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust, Psalms 103, 14. But don't let that scripture lull you into thinking that now God gives you a license to sin. He does know our frame. He does remember that we are made of the dust of the ground. But it is not a license for us to do whatever we want to do. It's not a license for us to go out and do all of this ungodly activities and then say, well, God, know how I am. God did not give us a license to sin, but he loves us in spite of us. Come on, say that with me. God loves me in spite of me. Now, a child of God is a special, peculiar treasure God constantly watches him constantly monitors him he is concerned about the welfare of his people when you follow the history of Israel it will show that God favored them favored them favor the, 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 the winds of favor <laughs> favored them <laughs> against all circumstances and even though there were several things that came up against Israel that could have defeated them and could have destroyed them God delivered them from bondage he preserved them while in the wilderness he himself fought for them and preserved them from defeat. When God continues to bless you, you're going to gain a reputation of being blessed by God. When God keeps on fighting battles for you, and keeps knocking out kings and situations for you, after a while, you get a reputation. People said all of the time, we heard that your God parted the Red Sea. We heard that your God fights for Israel. We heard that your God is a God that does not play. And it's true with us as we serve God sincerely, as we serve God uh, with everything in us, we see God beginning to fight our battles for us. 
and things that we shouldn't have or positions in life that we shouldn't be in because you have been faithful to God God places you in places folks never said you could be God fights for his people one round after another but since he fights for us there are certain characteristics that God expects from us see expectancy cannot be a one-way street expectancy must be a two-way street so many people expect God to do so much for them but what are you doing for God you cannot expect God to do everything for you and you not do anything for him we, we normally expect God to deliver us and help us both naturally and spiritually but God expects us to live right God expects some things from his people you don't expect his people to be weak saints you don't expect his people to be wishy-washy saints you don't expect his people to be sometimey saints you know how folks are sometimes they speak to you sometimes they don't and God says, sometime you speak to me and sometime you don't speak to me when you need something speak to me when you get in trouble speak to me when it looks dark in your life but I just want you to speak to me because I'm God just want you to speak to me because I'm good just want you to speak to me because I've made a way out of no way for you hallelujah and somebody wrote a song one day and said if he doesn't do anything else for me he's already done enough I just added to that a little bit because they said if and I agree with them if he has never done anything else for me I can shout my way all the way to heaven but because I know the kind of God he is he's not satisfied with blessing me he just wants to bless me over and over and over and over again he just wants to keep on blessing me because the more he blesses me the more he shows his glory in me and the more he blesses his people you can stand up in the midst of adversity you can stand up in the midst of trials you can stand up in the midst of dilemma and let folks know that it wasn't nobody else but the law the reason I'm where I at God did it the reason he placed me where I'm at God did it you didn't have anything to do with it a whole lot of folks will try to run up to you and say if it wasn't for me no you're not that strong and you're not that powerful the real story if it was not for the Lord who was on my side I would have been swallowed up I would have been defeated the devil would have had his way in me but thank God I say thank God good God from glory there was a man that couldn't see and Jesus laid his hands on him Jesus spit in his eyes and when he spit in his eyes he took him outside of town and say what do you see and he said Jesus I came here blind I can see a little bit better but I can't see everything that I need to see Jesus spit on his eyes and say what do you see now he said I see men and they look like trees walking and so Jesus touched him again and say what do you see now he see I see men hallelujah just like men I'm trying to let you know that sometimes he has to give you a second touch the first time he get a little better and the second time you'll see a little bit more little by little he's delivering me little by little he's helping me little by little he's giving me joy little by little I feel my 
strength coming back. Little by little, I feel my joy coming back. Little by little, yay! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to close. Hallelujah. But do you remember when Jesus came through the coast of Sidon, came through the coast of Zion, came through all of these coasts and got to Decapolis? And when it came to these cities, he saw one more man. This man was blind and deaf. And so Jesus took those anointed fingers and stuck them in his ears. And then he took his hands. He spit on him. And then he touched his tongue. And when it touched his tongue, his tongue came loose. He delivered him a little bit at a time. I don't know what you've been going through. But one thing I know, if you let him touch you here, he's not finished until it touch you there. You rejoicing over here. But he need to touch you over there. You sometimes you dance and you rejoice too fast. You're so happy that he touched your right shoulder. You ought to stay there and let him finish the work and touch your whole body. Sometimes you move too fast. But I want to let you know, stand ye still. See the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and let God bless you. Stand still and let God deliver you. Because little by little, he's driving out the enemy. Little by little, he's giving you more hope. Little by little, you're going to be able to make it. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what your next door neighbor said. My God is able. Able. He's able. Able to keep me from falling. He's able to present me faultless. He's able to put running in my feet, clapping in my hand. He's able to give me everything that I need. Natural blessings, spiritual blessings, blessings above, blessings below. He made me the hand and not the tail. He put me in front and not in back. He made me a lender and not a borrower. My God is able. How many of you know he'll deliver you little at a time? Ooh. A little at a time. Every now and then I share that testimony with you. How my mother, Mother Hawkins, told me that at the age of two years old that I had received or contacted asthma in my body over 40 years I suffered with a disease couldn't hardly breathe when I first started preaching the gospel in 1988 sometime I'd preach and just have to stop sometime I'd preach and have to sit down because my breathing was so constructed. And while I was sick preaching about four years ago now, sick preaching in God's holy place, God reached down and pulled all that stuff up out of my system. God worked so many miracles for me and touched my body. And now I got so much wind, now I just got to cut off. Just, 
you may not be able to bear it. But there was a time that I didn't have the strength that I have now. But since I know who did it, I don't have anything against the doctors. Everybody ought to have a doctor. Everybody ought to get a, a yearly exam, a checkup, see about yourself. And when I had asthma, those doctors described for me the kind of medication that I needed to take. I had albuterol and had the Theodore tablets. Some of y'all know about that. Alupin, all of that. I use all of that. Matter of fact, in the 1960s when I had to school, they didn't have those small inhalers then. They had these big things. They'd be bulging out your pocket. And kids make fun of you. I'd go to school with this big thing in my pocket. And they wouldn't hardly pick me when it's time to play gym. No, we don't want him because he can't play long. and all that humility and all, all that embarrassment I should say all that humiliation sitting on the sidelines having to take time out and I waited 40 years for my deliverance but since it's here now I gotta give God my all in all I gotta praise God. See, you don't know why some folks praise God like they do. But there are thousands of people in here today that has a reason for praising God like they do. Take 20 seconds and tell your neighbor now why you praise him like you do. Take 20 seconds and tell him your story. What did he do for you? Why do you praise him like you do? Well, friends, if you're like I am, you're still rejoicing and praising God because you know that your deliverance comes little by little. Your deliverance comes a little at a time. And you can have this message in its entirety by writing me, Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, Temple of Deliverance, 369 GE Patterson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38. 126. As for the offer number that now appears on your screen for an audio cassette version, send a gift of at least $5. For CD, send a gift of at least $12. And for DVD or VHS, send a gift of at least $15. You also may use your credit card by dialing 1 877 369 6157. This number is on your screen now. 1 877 369 6157. As for the offer number that you now see on your screen when you dial in, please have your credit card ready. Somebody is standing by now to receive your call. Well, we love you with the love of the Lord. Try to stay cool. And to our next telecast, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. God bless you.